Hi, I'm J.B. Wagner. I'd like to welcome you to my channel, Unconventional Wisdom. I come to you with over 50 years of photographic experience, which I'd like to share with you. You don't need to subscribe and you don't need to like if you don't want to because I'm doing this for fun and not to make money. In addition, I like to, to give you the conclusion up front. So this video poses the question, what is one big reason for choosing to shoot black and white? And that reason is that when people view your work, they will never ask you, is that the way it really looked? Now, in the old days, in the film era, when I'd produce exceptional results in color, almost always someone asked, well, what kind of camera do you own? That's not so common anymore because people are producing really beautiful work with their phone cameras and any other kind of camera. But what, when they ask you, is that the way it really looked? They mean, did you doctor it up either in post-processing or in-camera processing to look other than what might have been real? Now, there are a lot of good responses to this question um, and usually the answer is no that's not the way it really looked first off we photograph in two dimensions but we see in three dimensions so it's not the way it really looked just to begin with if you use other than a normal lens which like on this old Minolta full frame film camera 35 millimeter film camera is approximately a 50 millimeter when they say normal it means that the sense of distance and relationship of foreground and background items to each other is the same as the human eye so as soon as you put on a wide angle lens you have changed that uh, perspective of separation uh, making distance look further away and uh, you're no longer it's no longer the way it really was. The same is true of telephoto. You compress those distances, not to mention adding bokeh in telephoto to blur the background, which is not what your eyeball does. So, in, and, and another way to address that question is um, the human view with the eyes is very, very panoramic. You can put your hands out, do a little test like this, look straight forward and see how long, how far out you can go and still see your hands. It's much greater this way than it is this way. But we don't produce most of our photographic images in a panoramic format. Now, if you really want to approximate human vision that way, you need to print uh, very, very large, like six foot long, two feet tall panoramics. And those have a sense of that just with a normal lens, so to speak, and those images have a sense of looking pretty close to what you might have seen. Now, for me, I'm trying to, given, and this can go back to the black and white era of Enzel Adams and the zone system. No one asked Enzel Adams in his incredible photo, black and white photographs of Yosemite, I'm sure, is that the way it really looked? And it, and it wasn't. He had to do uh, extensive pre-visualization of what his outcome would be, knowing his unique process of light metering, exposure, and film development to get a, quote, perfect negative. Well, in, in the digital photography world, if you're doing a digital darkroom, meaning you're working on a computer with advanced software, I use DxO Photo Lab for this mostly, and Topaz Photo AI. Knowing those tools that I have, I can look at a scene or at material subject matter and pre-visualize an outcome that is what I want, even if it doesn't quote. It's not. It doesn't. It's not going to look exactly the way it looked to my eyes anyway. And I don't care. I'm trying to create an artistic image and have and using something to work with. My wife's a painter, paints and oils. She takes photographs to give her something to work with. And when you shoot in raw, like I do, and the images are flat and they're not very attractive and they don't look like what it looked like um, 
there's a reason for that, but when you render them to what you want them to be, they can be exceptional. So by doing black and white though, you alleviate all of that tedious inquiry and you come up with images that um, obviously don't look like it looked, but can be beautiful and artistic and engaging. So I did this video on black and white and I'm going to share with you a few black and white photos throughout the video, interspersed in the video that I've taken recently. Now, I generally convert my color images to black and white in post when I do black and white. I haven't, so in the days before mirrorless cameras where, you, where you're looking through the sensor and you can change the sensor um, image to black and white, before that, you always looked in color because it was a mirror prism or a rain, or if you're looking through a range finder or an optical viewfinder and you have to visualize in black and white. Now you can actually choose different black and white modes. There are even a couple of cameras, one by Leica, one by Pentex, that are only shoot in black and white. But, but in any case, you can, also, you can also do film in black and white. So there are many, many options for how you render in black and white. I'll leave that up to you. I'm not going to cover those in this video, but I encourage you to, to shoot or render in black and white so that you can think in black and white and do the pre-visualization in black and white and have an outcome in black and white because I think it's a really great experience to build your photographic skills. I hope you like this video. And thanks for watching.